This is a stove and pot and skillet video. And what brand are we trying today? We are trying Thiessen's. Yeah, you never heard of that one? Yeah, neither did I. But we are gonna cook up some hobo breakfast in a, an amazing trail gate recipe and put these pieces of equipment through a little bit of the culinary ringer right by this beautiful lake. But come along, let's get cooking. Wow. Sometimes it tastes like, you know, a weird hot dog. But uh, you know, if you're a bag eater, this is for you. Mm, hope you can hear that, because that's crunchy and that's delicious. Hey, oh, Chef Corso, Outdoor Eats. I'm here to put you on the path to amazing meals on your outdoor treks in I am sitting here by Jordan Lake, just outside of Durham in North Carolina. It is a beautiful fall day and we are cooking up some lunch. But what we are doing in this video today is we are gonna look at a new camp stove that I got. Yeah, new camp stoves. Very, very exciting. But it's also a brand that I am not very familiar with and a brand that you might have never heard of, and that's Thiessen's. And so Thiessen's is part of the Pit Boss family. They have a whole bunch of rig style stoves and base camp cooking um, options, but they also have a backpacker stove. So this is a backpacker stove video in order to take a look at a couple things that they sent me. Thanks Thiessen's for sending these. Um, I have cooked on these a couple times before, but I haven't done a full deep dive. So this video is that deep dive into our chimney style stove setup, but then also uh, we've got some pots and pans we're gonna, we're gonna take a look at as well. So it just really depends on you know, who's going on your trip and what, are you, what, what you're planning on cooking. We're gonna look at the tech specs for these, see what the weight and the dimensions are. We're, yes, we are gonna boil water because a lot of you out there, that's all you really do anyway. It's all you really care about. But then for me, we're also gonna make a couple recipes on these stoves and on these skillets because I wanna see what it can do. Can it actually saute? Is it gonna melt something cheesy? Is it gonna toast something? Well, we're gonna answer all those questions by the lake. Let's get cooking. So this is our chimney style setup. And for overall specs of this, our size is this, and our weight is about like this. And this is what was given in this cook set. So it comes with two mini bowls, plastic. We've got our burner see what their burner looks like in comparison to some other brands out there. Okay, so we've got a pocket rocket style, little bit larger surface area than some of them out there, but standard tri-feet situation. And what else we've got in here? We've got two mini foldable sporks and a canister holder for stability if you like using those kind of things. So the interesting thing, you might've seen this already, that is new and different, at least to me, is this disc. And what they call this is a heat exchanger. And I have used this a couple times before, but what this does is nest right in those three feet and apparently will help dissipate our heat from here to here and to have some hopefully even cooking. But we're gonna check that out but this is one thing I'm super curious about as far as this heat exchanger and about this unit. So that's what we're looking like for our chimney style stove. It does have the, the waffled baffled uh, sort of windscreen and, and uh, sort of construction on the bottom that a lot of you may be familiar with, but this, this does fit there. So that's a, that's a good thing. And what size is our pot here? We've got a little bit over a liter. So really good for two people, potentially three people, uh, depending on uh, your, your belly size and who's going on the trip. So we're gonna boil up 16 ounces of water here at whatever elevation it is by the lake. Not very high at all, but some, some tepid water, 16 ounces, and we're gonna see how fast this boils. The thing about these plastic bowls and plastic sporks, you know, I appreciate that they come in there, 
but I'm not gonna use these. I really don't love eating out of or with plastic, but you know, that's just me. We are gonna get 16 ounces of water boiling. Special thanks to old man Winter behind the camera, one of my great old buddies, but he is gonna start a timer while I start my burner. There is an igniter on here too. Let's find out. Not a bad place to watch water boil, but we are getting really close. Steam's starting to pop out. Almost. Where are we at, old man Winter? 237. 237. Yep, there we go. What do we got? 255. 255. So let's say about 245 to three minutes for a rip and boil. It's not that bad. Uh, what I will note about this unit, if you want to come in a little bit closer here as we're pulling the, pulling the stove off. So this heat exchanger is nice and nice and hot, nice and warm. It's definitely helping put some heat to the outer parts of the uh, outer, outer parts of the pot, but also really helps with stabilization too. So I would say that doing this, it's going to stay on there, but it is really, really tippy and not very secure at all. So I would say you really need to make sure to use that heat exchanger uh, to be able to have a nice, stable cooking surface. Okay. So we don't need this water for our dish, but uh, you know, if you're a bag eater, this is for you. So we are going to make a dip here today. This is fall. We are talking about a trail gate dip, which can be you know, your whole meal, but we're gonna make a cheesy German sausage dip. So we've got German sausage, Swiss cheese, some onions, some beer, but what I am looking for this pot is to see how it actually like cooks, how it sautés, is it gonna scorch, is it gonna get me some really good flavor, is it gonna melt that cheese, and is it gonna work for me for my, for my dip? But let's, uh, let's prep up our ingredients for it. So I'm just using some pre-cooked sausage here. I love taking these along because they're already pre-cooked and vacuum sealed and definitely helpful for the old food safety situation. We're gonna get this up to high heat because I've got a whole onion, a couple sausages in there, and I wanna see what this thing can do. Well, I've definitely got a pretty good mass of ingredients in here, you know, half a pot full, and it's actually making quick work of our sauteing of our onions and heat it up really, really quickly. I'm starting to get a little bit of color on the bottom. That's what I'm looking for. And I'm not putting the lid on this one because I want a lot of that moisture to, to leave our pot here. But I could already tell that you could easily make this into a soup. You could make a really nice, fresh, fresh soup really quickly with this. quick boiling and quick sauteing stove. All right, so it's been cooking for just a few minutes. I'm gonna take it off the heat for a sec. We are getting some nice color on our sausages and on our onions. And let's take a look at the bottom, see if we can get it in the light there. there we go. So it is not necessarily scorching, but it is starting to It is starting to toast on the bottom there. So something to, to be mindful of as you are kind of cooking and sauteing and things, but we will be able to release some of those bits from some of the other ingredients that we're gonna throw in here. But overall, not too bad, and I'm not smelling any, any, anything that's super scorching. 
this is looking good to me. You could also, you know, make this in a skillet uh, to let some of those things caramelize a little bit more, but we're gonna go ahead and add some nice fall beer. Give that a stir too. And again, that can kind of dissipate and kind of deglaze our bottom of our pot here. So sort of a pre-cleaning situation. Oh man, this is smelling like fall right here on the beach. It smells awesome. So I'm gonna add a little bit of German mustard too. Turn our heat down slightly. Test out our kind of simmer function as well. Looking pretty good. We're gonna add a good amount of cheese here because this is a cheesy dip. This is just sliced Swiss cheese. You could use some Gruyere. You could use some other fancier cheeses, maybe a little mozzarella too, or baby bells. Get some nice melty, soft cheeses in there. I'm also gonna throw a little bit of apple cider vinegar in here. Just gonna give us a little bit of freshness. You know, for that mustard too, you could use a couple mustard packets if you like. That spider out of here, he just, he's not invited to Trailgate Snacks. And we're just gonna stir that up to get our cheese to melt. Oh my goodness. Nice. So we'll just let that cheese melt for a minute or two. And oh wow. Oh come on. So you could easily do some whole pretzels, some, some snack pretzels, some breads, your favorite crackers, whatever, but it is fall and it's October. So, oh, yes. Let's give that a try. Cheesy German sausage dip. Mm. Yep. Look at all that cheesiness. Wow. But if you've never trail gated before, please do it. Pack your stove and your rig, make a dip, make something to share. But again, let's see if we can get this. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice in the fall sun. I dip, you dip, we dip. But as far as this stove goes, it reacted pretty darn well. It, it heat up really quickly, was able to give us some color and some saute on our sausage and our onions. So that's really good. It simmered quite well. It didn't have any, um, what I did notice with this heat exchanger, it did have some nice even heat across the whole pan. And if you've watched any of my videos before, uh, I do love pot and pan integration. I do love nice even heat and a, and a nice ratio of burner to pot. So overall, overall pretty darn good. And the heat exchanger definitely helps you get a little bit more heat to the outer parts of your pot instead of just having one you know, big old rocket right in the middle. Yes, nice. So we're gonna keep on dipping on this. But the other thing we're gonna test today is we're gonna test the skillet. So there's another kit besides this chimney style stove which comes with two pots and sizes are 0.8 liters and what size is this? 1.5 liters. So good size for one to slash two people, two to slash three people with lids and skillet with sort of grill marks in there. We're gonna check that out. Plus a uh, handy, handy handle. So we aren't gonna test the pots here today because I think they're probably gonna be fine and we don't need to make any soup today, but I do wanna test this skillet to see if it toasts, to see if it gets hot enough, and to see if I can make like a breakfast skillet right in here. So that's what we're gonna test next. And you know, honestly, I don't always take a skillet on my backpacking trips. Sometimes I do, cause I you know, want some toast or you know, really want uh, some sort of skillety experience. So one thing I have learned from uh, other stoves and skillet combos is you don't want to do this, okay? And why you don't want to do this is there's no space for the flame to hit your, your skillet. So you need to give it a little bit of room 
to be able to maneuver around, oftentimes you actually extinguish your burner. Don't want that. So you need to give it a little bit of a little space. So for this, we are not going to use the heat exchanger. We're going to put it right on the three feet, which is pretty, pretty normal. And so I will say this is, you know, this feels pretty, pretty classic to a lot of, a lot of pocket rocket, a lot of, a lot of three feet burners out there is it's a little slick and you just have to be really mindful about where you're putting it so it doesn't tip over. So what we're testing here today is kind of a hobo breakfast. So I've got, I want some toast. I want to see how this toast, I want to see how even the heat is or if it's not. So I've just got an old, old roll. I've got some summer sausage that I'm going to fry up because I want to see if I can get a nice sear on this. And I've got some eggs. And I'm going to make some scrambled eggs today. So what I did is I cracked three, three regular eggs in here and just mixed them up. And if you're just hiking, it's going to get mixed up anyway. But we're going to try to see if you can have some nice low even heat to be able to cook up our scrambled eggs and kind of have a one skillet breakfast. So let's do this thing. So I'm going to try to go for nice medium for our toast to start off. Get that oil moved around. Another, another cooking tip is anything that the oil touches will more likely be brown. Just think of it like the Lion King. Anything the light touches is yours, Simba. So we've, our pan is heated up nice and quick. We're already bubbling with oil. Okay, nice. Oh boy, we're getting there. Just gonna adjust my heat a little bit. Be mindful of not to tip over my pan. Oop, tippy. Wow. That is a nice looking piece of toast right there, my friends. Wow, just hit, hit that backside with a little bit. Ooh, this is getting pretty warm pretty fast. So, and as you can see here, we do have some nice even heat across the whole piece of toast. I'm gonna add a little bit more oil to our pot here. So you do have to be mindful of your overall heat and keep on playing around with it. Don't walk away from it. I am noticing that our handle is getting a little bit warm here, so something to be mindful of. Well, that is a very good sound. Love hearing that meaty sizzle. Again, we do need to be mindful of our overall heat so we're not cooking too fast, but we are cooking pretty hot here in our skillet. And overall, doing pretty pretty good through the toast test. Pretty good even heat. Still need to be mindful and moving around a little bit. If you never fried up summer sausage like this, you are missing out on one of the world's great delicacies because it completely game changes it. I'm also resisting the urge to move it because I want to get a nice sear on it. And what you could do actually, and what I maybe do next time is cook up the summer sausage first, because then we have that summer sausage fat and a little bit of oil to be able to toast up our, our bread with next time. So I'm turning it up really hot here to see how this does. So you can get a really nice sear on it. Sausage, greasy, bubbly, oh yes. So I am noticing just with the overall ratio of burner to pan here, is the outside is a little bit cooler than the inside, which makes total sense, but overall not too bad. It's not like we have a, a skillet that's way out here that we're trying to get heat to. So then you can maybe just shift around your slices. So these are looking pretty darn good to me for our summer sausage. 
Just put those right on our toast for our sort of hobo breakfast. So we're gonna let our, our pan cool down just a little bit. But while we're doing that, let's take a look at where we are today. So we've got our scrambled egg mixture all in here. Man, apparently I didn't shake it up enough, but that's easy to fix. Nice mix, we'll turn our burner back on. Keep it at a nice low heat. And we're gonna see how our scrambled eggs cook up, especially with these ridges too. It's heating up nice and quick. So not, I didn't, you know, throw any extra oil here. It's not sticking too much, which is a great sign. And those fresh eggs in a, in a bottle will last for two days max, especially depending on your trail conditions, especially as we're getting into fall here, maybe the cooler evening temperatures will help be a little mini refrigerator for you. But it's a great way to take fresh eggs on the trail for a couple days and not have to worry about getting them all cracked by your socks. Wow, look at that. I mean, that's, that's just like inside, pretty much. Nice and velvety. Add those to our summer sausage for a beautiful little hobo breakfast bite. Hmm. All right, let's give that a try. Mm. Hope you can hear that. But that's crunchy and that's delicious. And that's toast. Toast is not bread, bread is not toast. I will say it in every video that I have to until you toast your bread, it matters. It's so good. That summer sausage, complete game changer when you cook it, because sometimes it tastes like, you know, a weird hot dog. Mm. Wow, that's, that's really tasty. Bite for old man winters back there. Gotta feed the camera crew. Mm. Wow. Well, I've got some more to eat and I've got some more beer to drink too. So thanks for coming along for testing out this Thiessen stove. Again, newer brand that I'm you know, not too familiar with, maybe new to you too, but both for the skillet and I'm sure the pots work just fine too because they're pots, but for the chimney style stove, it could be another option for you to consider and it's another brand for you to consider when you are choosing your, uh, your, your, your equipment for your, your backpacking trips. But get out there, cook something amazing somewhere awesome. I'm really glad we found this spot here today because it is gorgeous. But get out there. Boca Boca.